Hey everybody, Lon Naylor here. And in this video, I'm going to give you some top tips and tricks for working with some of the really cool new PowerPoint video templates from awesome designers like InstaVid and RootPixel. I'll put some links to some samples below, but today we're going to be working with the Magic Video version 3 templates from InstaVid. So let's get started. I'm going to start with one called Punch Pop Color which has a lot of great animations and really cool stuff like that, but the secret sauce to these is that they are designed from the ground up to be easily modified, if you know how that is. So let's take a look at this first slide. I'm not really going to get into how to change colors and text and stuff like that. That's all pretty straightforward. Where you will struggle will be with things like changing images. So let's take this gal right here. I clicked on her. I'm going to double click and that's going to bring up the format picture options. I'm going to go to fill and primarily what makes these easy to modify is that this is essentially a picture that has a picture as a background. So I'm going to go to file and pick a new picture. And the first thing you'll notice is one of the issues that some people will struggle with here. Notice how I'm a little bit scrunched here. It's not quite the right size. The way we get around that, and again, due to the beauty of the design here, is I'm just going to go to Format, and then to Crop, and I'm going to select Fill. What that's going to do is it's going to make the image fill the specified shape. If I want to make an adjustment, I'll go ahead and click on it again, go to Crop, Fill, and now notice I might want to center this up a little bit. What's going to show up in the final shape here is whatever's within my crop lines here. And what you'll notice is I have a little bit of overlap from the original image. So I can click and drag it over, center it up, and then hit the crop button. And now it's all in the right perspective and the dimensions are awesome. Trust me, if you didn't know that little trick, you will struggle with getting good looking results with these videos. And this particular template is really just some simple shapes, again, that can easily be changed color-wise. And I can click right inside the text elements. So other than the animations, which are all pre-done, there's really not a lot to do except for going through and repeating the process to swap out images. To fill, pick an image, and kind of repeat the process. Notice you do have to be a little bit careful as far as height and things like that. So certainly some images will work better than others. But uh, you can kind of get the idea there. Crop it up, and that's going to look good. In fact, let's take a quick preview and see how we're going. Pretty sweet. So that's one sample. Let's take a look at a little more complex kind of an arrangement. This one is called Parallax Glitch, and it really has some interesting effects and elements to it. But notice, if I click on what seems to be the image here, in fact, I'll go ahead and zoom out a little bit. If I click on it and go to fill, well, this is a solid shape. There is no picture fill. And that's because it's actually an element on top of the picture, which is this kind of filter looking thing. To get at the picture to modify it, I'm going to use one of the secret weapons of PowerPoint by going to the Home tab and the Selection pane under Select. You notice that I'm clicked here and it says Picture. So what I need to do to be able to get at the underlying stuff is I'm going to go ahead and uncheck the eyeball there. And when I click now, you'll see that this is the actual picture and it says Diagram 3. In case you didn't know this, this is what's called Smart Art in PowerPoint. And I know it's Smart Art because it says Diagram. So the way I'm going to modify this is click the little arrow here. I will click on the image 
and then just hit the delete key. At that point it's going to ask for, well we kind of need an image here so I'll click this and search and using rather the same process I want to make sure that it fits the way I kind of want it to. So I'll click on it, again go to the format tab under picture tools, crop, fill, and just make sure that, eh, we'll scooch this down a little bit, but notice again I can't really move it over too much, so that's going to be pretty much what I'm going to pick. But it prevents it from being distorted from side to side dimension wise. When you're finished, make sure that you recheck the eyeball here to put the filter back in place. And then basically we can move on from there. Repeat the process for each of these elements. Uncheck. Make sure I'm on diagram. Delete that. Pick a new picture. You'll want to use nice high quality images and I usually again just double check it under format, crop, fill. And that's pretty much already the right size. So let's take a quick look. I like them. I like these a lot. I've really been having a blast just because they're so simple to edit. Make sure you don't monkey with anything else, like the shapes and all that good stuff. It really boils down to pretty much a matter of swapping out your images and modifying text where it's appropriate. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the Parallax Glitch slideshow with the original and my modifications. It took me less than 10 minutes to do this and half of that was picking the right images, not even necessarily making the modifications. On the downside, what you'll find is that all the templates have like a music background track to them. Now the problem there of course is that PowerPoint doesn't have a timeline that you can trim this audio effectively. You can try but it gets a little squirrely at times. So for that reason, of course, I prefer to add my music track inside of Camtasia after kicking this out as a video. If you'd like to incorporate the music files, you can click on the little speaker icon, right click, and save media as. Save it as an audio file, and then pull it into Camtasia and adjust your music lengths appropriately or just use a music track from your own library. So that's it for now. I've been having a blast with these. I highly recommend them. You can get some really interesting video content and most of them are geared towards being able to tell a story. I like the slideshow aspect and again I'll have some samples for you down below. Click the link and I've got a bunch of bonuses for you also. So check them out and we'll talk to you next time.